friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about cereals and crackers for long-term storage. Now, before I get into talking about how to package up store-bought cereals and crackers, let's talk a little bit about storing items for making your own cereals and crackers. Because if you're just getting started into food storage, that should be what you're doing first. So having a couple of good recipes and then storing the things that you need for that are going to be the most important thing to start with. Now, I have a few different cracker recipes out there. I have the cracker bread, and then I believe I have the multi-grain and seed cracker recipe. And then I have the one I did on Wanda's gluten-free cracker recipe from Deep South Homestead. And I'll try to remember to get all those linked in the description box below. I have, I think, three different granola recipes out there they're all my own recipes and then i have a cream of wheat slash rice slash whatever you want it to be cereal that you can make and these are all very simple recipes and require very little things so let's look at the granola you could simply stock up on peanut butter honey and oats and you can have yourself a really great granola because it only takes those three ingredients to make the peanut butter granola and that is our favorite and then with the oats you can also make obviously various flavors of hot cereal using your oats that you have in storage and then for your cream of wheat or cream of rice cereal or it can be a blend of many different grains it's just a matter of using the same grains you would store for making your breads and your crackers with so look into doing that first and years ago i told my family this is back even when the kids were still living here that if it came right down to it and it, it was a major grid down situation and we couldn't afford to buy the organic box cereals, then they're gonna have to be happy with whatever hot breakfast I can make or granola. Well, that was just a given, because that's gonna be your most frugal way to go. And really for long term, that's gonna be the best. However, Patrick still, even though I will make him lots of hot, fresh breakfasts, and he loves it, he does still enjoy having his cold cereals. and. Through the years, I have found a few different organic cereals that he really likes. And now that I have a place, I found a place that I can buy them for a pretty decent price, especially when I do the discounts, Is and that is Vitacost. I highly recommend them. And no, I'm not an affiliate with Vitacost. I know I'm talking about them all the time, but I have no affiliate with them other than just that I'm happy with them and I'm going to promote them in that way. I get no kickbacks for that, just so you know. A lot of times the cereals, when you buy them, and same goes with crackers, come in the kind of bag. It's, you know, it's that plastic bag. It's a little different, but it's only going to keep the cereal fresh for so long. You leave that cereal like that on a shelf for too long and it's going to get stale. And it could possibly get bugs. I've never seen that, but it can still get stale even in the unopened bag. All of these cereals here come in bags like that. So then what I recommend for those is vacuum sealing them into jars. Now, uh, one of Patrick's favorite is the shredded wheat. And I've got that in here. And I did that one this morning. This is the first time I've actually jarred this up because I've only just started getting back into really stocking up on these things. Not just keeping it on, on hand to work through, but stocking up for down the road when these might not be available or we can't even afford to buy them or whatever the case may be. Typically what I find is boxes of this size, the ounce is going to vary because it's going to depend on the cereal itself. Some cereals are lighter weight than others. But they can be 14 ounces, 10 ounces, 16 ounces for a box this size. So I'm, I'm going by the volume, not the weight. So you see a box about this size. Generally speaking, they're going to fit pretty good in a half gallon jar like this. Now here's another cereal, the same size box. And you can see the difference in how it filled up the jar. This one just barely fit where this one I had some air space in there. But again, generally speaking, they will fit in these jars. So I've got a couple other ones. Like I got, I've got the Cascadian Farms Honey Nut O's, Cascadian Farms 
Honey Nut Crunch, and then the, the Barbara's uh, Oat Crunch. These are some of his, of his very favorite cereals. So since I've been stocking up on these, obviously I'm just going to keep some of the boxes as he works through them, but I've decided I'm going to go ahead and go back to, I've done this before, when I bought cereals in bulk, is I'm going to go back to storing them in the half gallon jars and then just putting them in a box to put it for long term storage. So let's go ahead and go through this. Now, some people may choose to add oxygen absorbers and freeze and all that. Personally, my, my personal opinion, and I've talked about this in many videos, that's just not necessary. You can do that if you want, if it makes you feel better. But in an oxygen-deprived environment, bugs are not going to survive in there anyway. And an oxygen absorber is only just going to ensure that if the seal comes loose, that it might suck it back down again because then that oxygen or it will take out whatever oxygen's in there. But I never use oxygen absorbers in jars and have never had any issues. So let's go ahead and do this. So you can see I've got my, my mason jar here, my funnel, just to keep me from spilling it all over the counter like I'd most likely do if I didn't have that and sometimes still do even with the funnel. And just like I expected, it fits in that. I actually have a little bit of space. Okay, and then I'm going to take my canning lid. Now, I don't recommend using Tatler or Harvest Guard lids for that. Now, I have some old jars of like um, coconut that I did using Tatler lids that actually did stay sealed, but uh, the newer ones, the newer design, they do not stay sealed when you vacuum seal them. So I don't recommend using that. And I don't know, the Harvest Guard may do better like the older Tatler lids did, but they may not. I just wouldn't depend on that. So save your Tatler lids for your actual canning and then use your metal lids. And yes, I almost always use recycled metal lids, ones that I've already canned with when I vacuum seal because they can be used again and again and again. One thing you got to check for, though, is making sure there's nothing embedded on the around this rubber ring. This has a little tiny dent right here, but it shouldn't be enough to affect the integrity of the seal on this. And then check the top, make sure there's no dents that are going across anywhere. If the dent's somewhere in here, it shouldn't be an issue. But in any time it's along the area where it's going to come in contact with the rim, that's where you want to be careful and make sure that it's not damaged and that, again, there's nothing embedded in this section right here. And then again, making sure the top of your jar is also clean. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the Food Saver top because I currently do not have any of the chambers in the six inch size. P people ask me about that all the time. If he's gonna make any that will hold the half gallon jars. He planned on it months ago. He never did hear anything back about parts. We're trying to get parts in bulk so that we don't have to double the price. Because just this part, when you go up to the six inch size, this can be as much as we charge for this whole chamber all put together. But you could probably try to make one your own. And I've also heard of people, some people have shared using their pressure canner and the valve on the pressure canner, attaching a hose to that, and then using some kind of vacuum pump. So that way you could do several jars at a time. And if your pressure canner is tall enough, you could vacuum seal a bunch of jars like this. Now with something like this you could also do the oven canning and that you wouldn't have to worry about that damaging your cereal. I just never use oven canning. I'm not going to waste the energy heating up my oven for this. So if you can get some of these, I'll try to link to some down below. They go, they've been going in and out of stock for the past year. So you have to keep watching for them but don't get desperate and buy it from eBay where they're going to charge you $75 for it. Uh, I, a lot of people were doing that last year when they went completely out of stock. But Food Saver did start making some more and was and got caught up. But you just got to keep checking back. If they're available on Amazon, I'll try to link to the set. Another place you can just go look it is directly on foodsaver.com. Sometimes you can get a bet the best price there. You still have to pay shipping on top of that, but it's somewhere around $24 for the set of two than whatever the shipping is on top of that. So anyway, what I use is the brake bleeder. You can use your Food Saver machine. I would say most Food Saver machines should be set up to go with the Food Saver tops. But 
I'm tired of Food Saver. I'm tired of my machines breaking down every two years. About five years ago, I switched over to the brake bleeder pump. And then I just take this tip. There is actually other tips in the kit. I'll make this kit, I try to make sure is always linked in the description box as well. Uh, that you can actually attach, and I never think to say this because I never use this method, but it's like a T-shaped tip that's rubber that will fit into this end, and then it has another end that you could actually fit into there, and it will stay in place so you don't have to hold it like I do here. However, this is just what I do. To me, this is going to be the quicker method anyway. Uh, you still have to pump it up. So if you can do it by hand, this is my favorite way to go. Now, half gallon jars are going to take longer. The point, the main thing is you want to pump this up. And instead of going by exactly what the gauge says, usually I try to get it so that it's at 400 or 15, depending on which one of these two numbers you're looking at. But I'll keep going past that. And what I do is I just keep pumping until it stops pumping. So don't worry too much about the actual number. If it stops, if the gauge stops moving, then that means it's created a good seal. So I'm just going to start pumping. Okay, it's pretty much done. It's not going to go any farther than that. And so I should have a good seal on my jar. And then I always test it by picking it up by the lid to make sure it's well sealed. I prefer to put a band on there rather snugly now this one here for some reason i never put the band on there the one this one i sealed up in a video last year <laughs> it's still well sealed i'll go ahead and put this band on this it's just an added safety measure and that way it, for some reason i lose the seal it's still a good tight fitting lid that should prevent it from going stale vacuum sealing it though is highly recommended then just make sure that you're putting your what it is and the date so you know especially if it's something you're going to put away for long term which is what i plan on doing with these i'm going to put them in a box and then put them away for long term and then these will be the ones that will work he'll work through later <laughs> if we need to and i would guess these should last for years in these jars without any issue so let's talk a bit about crackers now you can do by the way if you're making your own crackers or your own pasta which i have videos on how to make your own pasta i'll link to a couple of them down below i do plan on someday doing another one that's more involved with different natural things that you can use to color your pasta but anyway talking about the crackers so you can use the same method if you're making your own crackers and you want to just get a whole bunch made up and and then just put them in smaller amounts you can do this. You want to make sure though that if you're baking any of this stuff yourself, you want it to be totally cooled off before you put it in the jar and vacuum seal it. If you vacuum seal anything that is warm into a jar like this, it can cause sweating inside the jar, or condensation, which can then cause mold to grow inside your jar. So you want them to be totally cool and dry before you do this. So what I did here is I went ahead and tried one of these boxes in this jar just to see if I was right in my hypothesis that I could fit one of these boxes, your standard size box for your organic crackers, into a quart size jar. And I was right. Now I would assume different crackers are going to fit differently like you're getting a Triscuit type cracker. It might not fit as well. You might not be able to put as many because just the way they're shaped they're going to take up a little more space. However, I only did that because I wanted to try it out. I have, I've been stocking up on some different crackers to have on hand. I, again, even though I have some great cracker recipes and I do make crackers from time to time, it is also still nice to have some various kinds on hand. The uh, late July saltine crackers are probably my favorite, but these uh, Simple Truth Organic wheat crackers here they're kind of like a wheat thin they're pretty tasty i have not tried these ones yet <laughs> this is a new one i'm trying so uh this is a stone ground wheat looks like it's got some other great stuff in there too but i checked all these boxes and i want to show you i already knew the late july crackers came in this kind of bag which is a mylar bag now it's not a thick mylar bag but it is well sealed in this mylar bag now my assumption is going to be 
that the crackers that come in bags like this are going to stay fresher for a longer period of time than the ones that come in the, the plastic bags that most of your cereals come in. So I'm gonna give that a try. I'm a little bit nervous, but I would like to at least try some in and leave them for a long period of time and then open them up. I, I feel pretty certain they're gonna last for a very long time, even years in the sealed Mylar bags they already come in. However, if you're still uncertain and you don't want to take that chance, you can always do the vacuum sealing. And this is just the kind of extra stuff. If you've got a couple years worth of grains, flours, oats, and uh, enough to make biscuits and gravy and pancakes and granola and hot cereal to last you for a long time, now maybe this is one of those things you can do as an extra just to add a little more flavor to your pantry, a little more variety to help prevent food fatigue. But again, it's one of those things that buying organic cereals by the box is not cheap. Though Vitacost is a great place to purchase them price-wise, especially when you get those different discounts, the 10% and the 15% they're always having some kind of sale. It's still not the most frugal way to go. So I recommend checking out my videos on making your own crackers, your own and your own hot cereals and so on. And if, if you're not already doing that, get familiar with that. I highly recommend the cracker bread. That one's our favorite. It's a little time consuming, but it's so good. It, they go with everything. You can use them with dip, you can use them with soup, whatever. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It gave you some ideas and more things that you can consider putting in your food store. If you're at that point where you're like, okay, what else can I do to add a little bit more to beef up my food storage? Well, here's a couple of ideas and a way that you can make them last for a long time so they don't go stale. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.